So as we start talking about functional groups, I want to emphasize that I'm not going to try to explain every peak and I'm not going to expect you to explain every peak. But I am going to want you to recognize the peaks that are associated with special behavior that is associated with the functional groups. So when we get to a particular functional group, I'm going to talk about which bonds are most likely to break, giving you the fragments, which little bits are most likely to leave to be recognized and so on. So we'll start off with alcohols. And in particular, we'll start off with penton 2 ol which is one of my favorite alcohols in particular because its mass spec illustrates everything I want to say, all the points I want to make about alcohols. Now, the first point I'm going to make about alcohols is that it's very, very rare that you see the molecular iron. So penton 2 ol has got a molar mass of 88. I'm not expecting to see a peak at 88. There's just too many good fragments that can come from alcohols. So anyway, without further ado, there's the spectrum. You can see you've got some little bits down here. You've got a base peak here at 45. You've got another nice peak at 55. Another one up here at 73. And if you use lots of imagination, you could always imagine a teensy little peak up here that could almost be the molecular iron. Now, before we go ahead and start focusing on the alcohol part, let's remember that all our organic compounds have got hydrocarbon bits with them too. And so we can expect to see some hydrocarbon fragments in there. For example, if you think back to pentane, our base peak was at 43, associated with CH3, CH2, CH2+, and there is a peak here at 43. And that's going to come from this fragment coming off, so breaking there, Radical goes to the carbon attached to the oxygen, cation stays on the propyl bit, and we get that propyl cation. Okay. Another bit we can imagine is breaking there, leaving this as the cation CH3, CH2+, which comes at a peak of 29. And of course, we could again imagine that little peak at 15 CH3+. So you should expect to see um, in almost all the spectra we look at, unless they're particularly weird, uh, the CH3, CH2 at 29, maybe a peak at 43, and maybe a little nubbin down there at 15. Now, of course, these were not the big peaks here. The big peaks are the three I mentioned earlier. And on this particular slide, I'm going to focus on two of them, the one at 45 and the one at 73, because one of the most common fragmentations that you'll get from alcohols is that you will break the bond that's next to the carbon oxygen bond. So here's our carbon oxygen bond there. So we're going to look at what happens when we break this bond and when we break that bond. OK, and in most cases, we're going to be thinking about the cation coming towards the oxygen. OK, so anyway, let's uh, take our penton tool. On. We'll stick it in the mass spec. We'll bombard it and we'll knock an electron out. Now, as I mentioned right at the start, that electron is most likely to come from a lone pair if you've got them. And here we got an oxygen with a lone pair. So that's the oxygen had a lone pair, had an electron knocked out. So it's just one electron left there. So it's a radical. But of course, the oxygen lost an electron. So it's a cation. So the radical cation is on the oxygen. Now, what we're going to see is that this extra electron here will pop down towards the carbon oxygen bond, just like that. And then we're talking about breaking bonds next to the carbon oxygen bonds, right? So let's look at this bond and let us homolytically break it. So one electron will go towards the carbon oxygen bond and one electron will go towards this carbon. So now we break it. The radical bit is the CH3, CH2, CH2. And the cation bit still on the oxygen, but now that oxygen is double bonded to the carbon there. OK, now this has a mass of, let's count it. Remember, there's a hydrogen there. So 15, 16 for the hydrogen plus 12 for the carbon. So that takes us to a 28 oxygen, 29 oh, hydrogen, 29 oxygen, another 16 or 45. So this has a mass of 45 and that's the big base peak. The big base peak is what you get when you homolytically cleave this bond here and you have the oxygen containing fragment is the cation. Now this is a particularly nice stable type of cation. It's called an oxonium ion 
where we formally write the plus on the oxygen. But I hope by now you can appreciate that some of these um, pi electrons from this double bond can pop up to the oxygen, thus putting the positive there on the carbon. So we can distribute the positive charge by resonance over both the oxygen and the carbon, thus giving it that extra stability. So mass of 45, the big base peak here, due to one of the oxonium ions that comes from cleaving the bond next to, on the left of, the carbon oxygen. Now let's do the same thing again. Here's our starting um, big bit here, okay, the starting um, molecular ion that, of course, we know is not going to last very long. Let's again bring this electron down to the carbon-oxygen bond, but now let's homolytically cleave the other bond that's next to the carbon-oxygen bond. So one electron goes to this carbon, making a CH3 radical. The other electron from that bond going up again to the carbon-oxygen bond. And so we make this nice little species here. Again, you can see this is an oxonium ion. Okay, what's its mass? Well, we've got CH3, CH2, CH2, so that's 43. Hydrogen there, 44. Carbon there, <coughs> 56. An oxygen, 16 plus 56 is 72, plus a hydrogen is mass of 73. So there's this nice peak down here. So two of the peaks come from the oxonium ions that you get from alcohols by breaking the bond, homolytically cleaving the bond, fragmenting it at those bonds, leaving behind the positive on the bit that still has the oxygen. So we'll clean up a little bit so I can continue to assign things. Just quick recap where we are. Some hydrocarbon peaks there, big peak at 45, significant peak at 73 assigned to the oxonium ions. Still got this peak here at 55. Now, of course, I said, hopefully reassuringly several times, you don't have to assign every peak on a mass spectrum, but it is nice to get the big ones. So where does this 55 come from? And the answer is it's associated with the second big thing that alcohols will do associated with fragmentation. And that is that they can kick out water from some, one radical cation to leave another radical cation, which can then go ahead and fragment. So let's start off with our radical cation here. And I'm going to be a little bit hand wavy here with my hydrogens and so on. But I want you to get the fundamental idea. So we've got our molecular ion. It's a radical cation. Got a hydrogen here. We can break the bond between this carbon and the hydrogen, which will leave this carbon as a positive. And then we can homolytically cleave the carbon oxygen bond such that one electron goes to the oxygen to fill out the lone pair and one electron comes to this carbon to give it the radical. So we end up with this nice radical cation and losing the water. OK, now this radical cation will undergo a hydrogen shift that I'm not going to worry about. What I am worried about is that it's got a formula of C5H10 plus, which has a mass of 70 and there's a teeny little peak of 70 there. So we have our molar mass that we're not going to see the molecular ion very often. But with alcohols, you can very often see 18 less than the molecular um, ion because of the loss of water. But then this molecular ion it's, or excuse me, this, this cation radical here can still fragment. And so what it will do, it will fragment so that it kicks out the CH3 as the radical and leaves behind this cation here. Now I've drawn it with a double bond here just to get the right thing, but essentially the most important idea with it is that it's got a formula of C4H7+, plus, which has a mass of 55. So this mass of 55 is a result of water loss followed by fragmentation to lose a methyl radical and you're left with the C4H7+. Getting from there to there to there, there'll be some hydride shifts associated with it. Don't freak out too badly about the whole thing. What's important though is where that 55 came from. Loss of water, loss of the CH3.